Hello, big thinkers. Welcome to another Big Think Mailbag. We've got the full crew here. We've got Bob. I've got mail. From Gigaboots. We've got KZ. I open letters. From KZExcellent.com. We've got Mr. Feel. Mail detected, opinion tolerated. From Mr. Feel's Wild Ride. (laughs) And Dr. Agro from Dr. Agro. Here's the mail. It never fails. It makes me want to wag my tail. Mail. Well, let's get started. We got an email from J.A. who says, Hello, Gigaboots crew. My freshman year of college, I enrolled in an elective course named History in Video Games. I thought it said History of Video Games. I figured this was going to be a course about the history of video games. Instead, it was more focused on how video games portray history. (laughs) Our first project was to research the Tiananmen Square Massacre... And design a video game about it. What? (laughs) My question for you all is, did you ever get assigned a school project that just left you wondering what the hell the teacher was thinking? Oh, man, that question was a left turn into safety. (laughs) Right? (laughs) You're like, now you will design your video game right now. Oh, no. They they inflicted an armchair devs on us. Right? Kiwami in the mailbag. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> the, this email just says Kawami. That's it. It's just, just this one word. Gun. Uh, I'm going to tell this story real quick. It parallels your story, but not as absurd in the same direction. Bob and I take a programming course to the newly added IT part of our high school. In the last year of us being in high school, they finally get an IT wing. There's a programming course. Bob and I take it. Teacher didn't teach us fucking shit the whole semester. Actually, the whole year. And then at the end, they go, make a game. And everyone in the class just goes, what are you talking about? Make a game. This is the same teacher, by the way, where he said something. He gave us some assignment. And then he realized that didn't make sense because he didn't give us the tools at all for it. And someone in the class just fairly calmly goes, "Mister, Mr., Mr., it was uh, Shugart, right? Schumann, I believe. Schumann. Yeah, Schumannba. Because he put his first initial at the end of his name. <laughs> yeah, you're thinking of Dan Shugart. <laughs> yes. Uh, Schumenba. Anyways, the fucking kid in the class, he just very calmly goes, Mr. Schumann, you're the worst teacher ever. And he goes, I know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that, was, uh, that, was, that was great. It did, did, did go well. Maybe at the end of a programming course that is in visual, basic. <laughs> don't, don't just... Be like, make a whole ass video game. I, I didn't teach you how to make a calculator. Yeah, no, that the way he said that stuck with me all these years. <laughs> he knew with absolute certainty he was a bad teacher. He had the tone the whole year. I of mean, like, yeah, this is my first year teaching. I have no idea what I'm doing. This is a new <laughs> fucking wing of this high school. What the hell's going on? And then that was like the breaking point 85%. Through I the you nothing. Make a video game. <laughs> yeah, no, it was, it was bad. Did you make a video game? Yeah, Bob and I made a video game. Funnily enough, the modules couldn't pass certain values between <laughs> each other. So uh, my my girlfriend at the time's brother, younger brother, uh, t- is, like helped us stitch them together. Uh, but it was it was a, a dungeon exploration game, kind of like uh, I the Beholder on SNES. It was funny, funny as in Bob got to do art for enemies. And he did the battle module, and I did the dungeon exploration module, which worked mostly. Mostly. <laughs> they mostly work together. Apparently, if you go to this square in the dungeon and you turn right, it just stops rendering new fields. <laughs> Who even knows why it does that? I don't, but uh, hopefully they don't check that in the middle of this uh, grade. Yeah, as you can imagine, that uh, floored the teacher because, of course, he didn't teach us how to make a fucking game. <laughs> so most people turned in things that were uh, it would be generous to call them a video game that is they had a title screen man I can't remember what anyone else did I just remember ours Get, <laughs> guess the number and you hit the button and it gives you a <laughs> random number from 1 to 100 <laughs> if I remember correctly if I remember correctly they had the energy of the world's smallest version of mist with no good art <laughs> I, or it's like 8 screens you get to choose two choices each. Thus, this game is three screens long. Wasn't there someone in our class who's like, yeah, I, I, I use Flash, so I just made a game in that and turned it in? 
<laughs> yeah, I think that's right. Yeah, that was uh, nobody busted out RPG Maker. That 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 year was fantastic. What a great course. <laughs> hey, let's move on to other people. Does anyone else have an absolutely absurd assignment by a teacher? Uh, well, I, I, uh, for background, uh, I'm trying to remember, Dan, you can help me out with this one. Mm-hmm. Cause I don't remember whether it was freshman or sophomore year of English. Oh no. I think it was sophomore. And like you were there sophomore year. Uh, did we do of mice and men in that class? I think so. Yeah. Okay. Then it was, it was sophomore year of English. We, we were doing of mice and men as part of the module. Mm-hmm. And at, at the end of the book, there was an essay, uh, assigned. Which was, uh, it was phrased as pretend uh, that, that yeah. you are George's yep. defense attorney. Mm-hmm. Uh, in the trial he's in after he shoots Lenny in the back of the head. Uh, spoilers for Of Mice and Men. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to need to make sure I put that in the timestamps. <laughs> uh, you need to put that in the title, but Of Mice and Men spoiler cast. <laughs> I remember... It's sophomore year of high school being so completely flabbergasted. Like this is, this is the dumbest, most, some computer came up with most, what the fuck are you even talking about? How does this even that? I just, I didn't do it. I wrote a two page essay and how dumb the assignment was and turned it in (laughs) and got an A and realized that this bitch hasn't been reading any of the assignments we're turning in. Oh yeah. my god. I, I feel like I feel like almost everybody who coasted through high school has a story like that. Yeah. yeah. I, I turned in I turned in um I turned in a pasta recipe for a science paper once. Because <laughs> <laughs> I was like, this bitch this, this bitch her ass is not reading. <laughs> her ass is not reading. God. And it's like B. And I'm like, what? you gave me, you 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 gave me, you gave me a that. That's where I. That's when I was like, you 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 bitch, you <laughs> bitch. You just look at the student and decide what grade they get. You don't read shit. <laughs> mm-hmm. You're like, that was a good pasta recipe. It should have been an A. Now, I, now that triggered some high school memories for me. I yeah. think it was junior year. Mm. I wish I could remember what book it was for. It was some book about a, a woman who lost her memory. Um. In an icy climate, and lived in a manor with some handsome man. <laughs> I don't remember at all what the book was. Okay, mm. but we had to select a song to match with this book. What? Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. And then give a presentation while using the song to like draw parallels. And I was like, "This is junior here in high school." I'm like 17 or 16. I'm don't. This is really dumb. What are you doing? <laughs> God, the American education system's interaction with literature at that level is fucked. Yeah. Yes. And like, I, yeah. I don't know if anyone else had uh, Miss Dam. She was yeah. the worst. Yeah. Yeah. I, I had her. Okay. She, uh, uh, she's a psychopath. <laughs> yeah. I remember she electrocuted a kid and then uh, bribed everyone with candy not to tell anybody. <laughs> I heard about it. <laughs> I was there. It was me. Which means that somebody with sugary lips uh, <laughs> squealed. <laughs> I can't believe they did it. I want Jason Schreier. <laughs> oh, no. Deliciously moist. She gave him a payday and everything, and he still talked. Oh, that's fucked up. Payday is pretty good. <laughs> yeah, she gave him a payday, but he was holding out for a hundred grand. <laughs> God, I don't think I've had a hundred grand in twenty years, dude. I ate my not first. Not in this economy. D- <laughs> <laughs> I had and I had my first hundred grand the other day, and I was like, I okay. So it's a king size, right? Half of it is like one chunk, the other half is another chunk. I didn't realize that fucking thing was just caramel. I popped that oh. thing in my mouth entirely while driving a car and then went, I can't <laughs> breathe. <laughs> <laughs> I had no idea. That was terrifying, actually. <laughs> I, I'll bet. There's the, like, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a mouth breather, but I was congested as shit that day. So when that moment happened and I'm just in my car trying to calm down, <laughs> I, just, I cannot open my You're mouth and breathe, right? Down. I'm just like... <sighs> Fuck. 
I wonder who I wonder who told uh, Miss Dam has like a million different stories. I know, right? There, there were a million different stories about how crazy that bitch was. <laughs> there was a, there was a time in class she was talking to a kid and she was like, "You know, you're very critical." And that means you're not going to be happy in life. What? <laughs> I shit you not. Oh my God. I shit you not. She looked at the, the kid in the eye when the kid pointed out something that didn't make sense. And he didn't do it as a sick own. Uh huh. But he pointed out something that didn't make sense. And she just looked him in the eye and said, you know, you're really critical. Then you're, you're never going to be happy. <laughs> it's even worse. Cause like, that's like the point of the literature class is critical thinking. I know. It's like, die. <laughs> She's like, why are you being so critical? We're just here in English class. You're supposed to consume these ideas, not criticizing any of them or deriving any meaning. Now I'm, re- I'm trying to remember if that was when I was in like the advanced English class or the regular English class. Because I think I, I think that was the year I went to just like, why am I doing advanced classes? That doesn't make sense. <laughs> and then went down to that and I ended up with her. I was like, oh, no, maybe it didn't make that sense. <laughs> You know, I got into later years in high school and I was like, wait, so you could like get into like gifted and other things early on and I just didn't know and no one ever told me. So I never looked into it. Uh huh. What the hell? I want that. And then you graduate high school and you go, wait, there was no point to that either. Yep. And then (laughs) and then you become an adult and you go, there's no point to anything. And then you talk about (laughs) Star Trek on the Internet for money. (laughs) And you're 48 years old. (laughs) Hey, girl, uh, I, I just got to say thank you for resurfacing that assignment because, yes, you are completely correct. That was sophomore year. That was that bitch. Was it Lip Nikki? It was something. I can't, I I don't can't know. remember she was her weird. name. She drank too much water. Yes, yes. But I just, that was a buried memory until you brought that up. And I'm like, yeah, he's right. I remember that. That was very bizarre. Yeah. Does anyone else have any other uh, completely bizarre assignments from teachers? I I have a couple. Okay. What I think I've mentioned this on some content, fucking somewhere before. But in middle school, we had a te- I had a social studies teacher who thought she was the smartest woman alive, <laughs> <laughs> and huh. she at the. She gave everybody an assignment where you had to write a paper in favor of one of the two presidential candidates, and she chose which one for you, and it was based on the opposite one your parents supported. What? Okay. I think she asked I think she asked people who their parents supported like <sighs> weeks earlier. Yeah. Right. And then deployed this fucking bomb, and I can't remember the outcome of this. <laughs> I th- I think the assignment got aborted when too many parents were like, "No, <laughs> yeah, you're not getting away with that in high school." <laughs> it wasn't high school; it's middle school. It was seventh oh, grade. Fuck! Are no. you wow? What? <laughs> <laughs> uh, the other one. This isn't a project; it's a whole class. Um. My junior year of high school, I was like, I'm going to take a creative writing class. That's a good elective. <laughs> Except it wasn't a creative writing class. It was a scrapbooking class. Um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I have no idea why I was named that. And I'm like, this isn't a creative writing class. Let me switch. And she's like, no, it's too late. I'm like, it's the first day of the semester. She's like, no, it's too late. You have to be in the fucking scrapbooking class. Which was 50-50 jocks who need a grade to stay on the team that was half the class and the other class was girls who would be into scrapbooking there was like no normal person in the class and i'm like i'm like like why am i here why am i here just the half the class half the class is the football team they're only here so there's one less thing they have to worry about getting above a c on yeah and i'm like well i i guess i'll just fucking sit here for an hour every day for a semester because I'm not doing anything at, at the they gave they gave us like a sheet like here are scrapbooking techniques at the end of the semester turn something in that uses X amount of them and it's shit like fold a piece of construction paper into a little spring so that when you turn the page it'll make something pop out <laughs> 
All right. cut photos into a collage. And I'm like, and, and, and I don't think this teacher taught anything else. I'm like, can you just go? Right. I feel like the, I feel like this is a waste of government funding. Yeah, you're not really <laughs> serving society. I was going to say I've never wanted a sports team to get more funding before. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's like man, there's a lot of broken lights in the hallways. I feel like there's some way to square this circle in a way that makes everyone happy except you. <laughs> <laughs> Intentionally and maliciously, you you should be very unhappy. <sighs> <laughs> but that that's all. <laughs> okay. Well, we can keep with the uh school theme because we have another question. Ooh. Jordevio writes, "What are some school subjects you had that you hated while in school but found a new found appreciation in an adult life?" For me, history is the biggest example. Uh I don't know if I necessarily have this. Um uh, but it was senior year of high school when I realized I really enjoy history, but my memory and inability to remember names has completely fucked my ability to engage with it. <laughs> so I'm always just like deeply fascinated in all of these stories. And then I go, I don't fucking remember the names. <laughs> so it's just it's just pointless to some degree, but it makes for a fascinating like like it's like consuming a television show, basically, because the brain retains none of it. Like, ooh, okay, that's neat. And then you think back and you're like, what What European country was that? Fuck. When was that son of a bitch? Uh, do you guys have any school subjects that you hated while in school but found a newfound appreciation for in adult life? Uh, all of them because American, the American school system is something designed to wring any possible enjoyment anyone could get out of learning out of them. Yeah. 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 The biggest one would have to be reading books because it, it would help if um any book you had to read in high school was anything that had dialogue like anything a person anything you had engaged with on your own time ever. Had. Right. And it yeah. wasn't like read this book from 1885. And I'm like, "Why? Why?" Yeah. Why? Yeah, yeah when when they finally were like, "Here, read Ender's game." I was like, "Thank you." Some sort of literature that was written any time in the last like five decades. Uh, thank you so much. This <laughs> this book finally a book that opens with literally stomping someone's head in. That's just I, this has been what I've been waiting for in this English course. Thank you. I, I knew there was some English class in, in our high school that was reading the Once and Future King, and I could never fucking find it. Year after year, there were kids walking around not having to read shit like text, and I couldn't figure out how to get oh, into that oh, English Andrew, track. Oh, you also had to read text! <laughs> yep. Oh man, I dodged that one. Thank God. Yeah, thank God. <laughs> did you, Kagro, did you also have to read Love's Music, Love's to Dance? Absolutely not. No idea. Oh. Damn, it was just text. Oh, yeah, lots of text. <laughs> I was supposed to read The Scarlet <laughs> like Letter. I won the lottery. <laughs> I don't, you what? fucking read Ender's Game in high school. Fuck you. I know. <laughs> You're right. I know. Cheating. <laughs> I, I, I read that in my own spare time because my brother was like, Ender's Game, uh, the Ender's Saga. Like, my, my, I think my mother, too. They were really into it. And it's like their point of interest was all the new Bean stuff, right? They're like, Ender's Game is neat, but then there's the whole Bean Saga or whatever. And then mm -hmm. I get into it, and then it becomes apparent when you read that side by side by the original like sequels to Ender's Game that it's like these are really old sci-fi. <laughs> like everything after that in the direct timeline is just like this is just some weird shit you write in the oh it is written in the eighties okay all <laughs> right that makes sense. I still every time it's brought up that that was like we read that for class I'm like what. That thing was made in the 80s. That's way too new, <laughs> right? <laughs> God, fucking tax. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's the real moral of the story. Is it a good book? I mean, like, let me put it this way, KZ. There, there are those who are going, and there are those who are staying. And oh. fuck that book. Okay. Um, is the Once in the Future King the thing about uh, Galahad in modern times? No, no. Okay, uh, the once in few. You're thinking of the Forever King, I think. Maybe because I was thinking like that was another good book I read for sc school. I have no idea what it was called though. Okay, yeah, that might have been the Forever King. 
I mean, I, I was that kid in your English class who was like, oh boy, another book from 1885. Let's fucking go. <laughs> I'm, I hate the scarlet. I hate the scarlet letter so fucking much. I'm just sitting here imagining Agro in like an old French duke's outfit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll tell I, you what I did get to read in science class. Ooh, uh, I had a science teacher assign us the moon is a harsh mistress. What? Why? Yeah, B- because that class was full of complete shitheads who <laughs> didn't want to do anything. And she's like, you know what? Here, you read this book. I'll give you some credit. I'm like, fuck yeah. <laughs> I saw so like my my junior year science class, which was supposed to be fucking chemistry. Um, I saw so many movies with nothing to do with science because that teacher did not want to teach. This is also the her ass is not reading teacher, by the way. Mm, <laughs> shock. Where it's just like I don't want to work today, so you're gonna watch Gattaca. <laughs> what? <laughs> All right. And 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 because classes were only like fifty minutes long, you have to. It takes two to watch a movie, so she gets to eat up two periods. Oh, oh my yeah, god. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to remember the organizational nightmare that was longer films, where I think I had a sixth grade science class where it took us three three periods to watch the core. Because they're like, yo, this is this is science. They nuke the core of the planet and turn it on again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I saw King of Monsters. <laughs> How, how come we don't get how come we don't get movies like that anymore where where like scientists have to also be action heroes? <sighs> I don't know. Well, we we can't have the scientists be heroes anymore because they're the bad guys. The billionaire elite class who fund everything don't want that to be a par- prominent thing in media. <laughs> mm. Look, we're just waiting for them to make the Half Life movie, and it will be just as much of a watershed moment in films as it was in games. <laughs> 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 The entire MCU oh. is now scientists. <laughs> and wow. first person. Every movie is now first person. Oh, oh man. God. It's like hardcore Henry is every film now. Isn't the isn't the first Doom movie also first person? Uh only at the There's end. There's a, a segment. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, it's a really good ending segment. Yeah, the I whole believe- movie is just a lead into that scene, and it's like, why did why did I have to watch an hour and a half for this? No, dude, it was so good. I was like, it was worth watching an hour and a half for this. That's that's absolutely. I think that's it's during the first person segment that you get the semper fi motherfucker. Oh yeah, no, it's, yeah. it's, it's easily it's right after that. Yeah. yeah, so good, so good. Blessed. Uh, you know, I was gonna say before we get off this tangent of school stuff, uh, it would be so easy to do a cursed content book club that was just us st- wholesale stealing the curriculum of some English course somewhere. <laughs> I, no, you- see, we got we got we got to read every single uh, all the eighteen sequels to Hatchet. Oh no! no God no! Every- oh, <laughs> you man. talked about that re- recently. I feel like, and I'm like, no, this sounds terrible. <laughs> Okay, so you didn't have to read Hatchet? Oh, no. I, I, I Middle school, I think I read half of it just because there was like, here's required reading for homeroom. And they're like, there's a stack of books over there in the front. And I picked up Hatchet. I think I got through about half of it mm-hmm. and went, all right, I'm bored. I'll just get something from the library next time I come in. <laughs> I'm going to tap out on this one. Uh, Let's go ahead and move on. We have another email from Banshee Neat. Banshee Neat writes, Hello, big thinkers. <laughs> See, it would have been confusing if this was the first email. There are a lot of highly anticipated games coming out this year, and so I wanted to ask a question related to the classic tradition of getting way too excited about video games. Can you recall the most excited you've ever been for an upcoming game in the past? Did that game live up to that hype at all? If you want, you can also apply this question to movies that you highly anticipated. Thanks for all the great work you guys do. Banshee Neat. Thanks, Banshee Neat. Uh, you know, it might be Metal Gear Solid 4. Oh, this is going to be a painful <laughs> one, isn't it? Oh, oh yes. Uh, I think I think it was Metal Gear Solid 4. And I was very excited for Metal Gear Solid 4. I finished a playthrough of the entire series uh, right beforehand. Watched every trailer countless times. It's uh, deeply ingrained, engraved on my soul. Um, and then I get to a scene which is incredibly long 
doesn't have good action going on and has absolutely no music. And since no other Metal Gear game had done anything like that to that point, I'm like, is my disc broken? <laughs> <laughs> and, and then I went out and bought another copy out of fear that my disc was broken. Okay, I do recall oh, this. <laughs> I, I remember that night. I remember the, the midnight release of, of 4. And I, I had come along because it sounded like a good time, but I wasn't going to buy it. But it was like I got there and just the energy, the anticipation, <laughs> the excitement of the crowd. I walked out of that GameStop with a copy of four. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think the next closest one, honestly, for me would be Final Fantasy 13. The, the funniest thing about that launch was seeing all the people who bought it on 360. Where it's just like, but your your copy has terrible... You've heard, You've heard what they've done to your version, right? <laughs> Square shot themselves in the foot with that release. Yeah. That was I'm really glad they updated the hell out of that for the uh the back and pat version. Right. So all the cutscenes actually look good now and countless other things. Thank fucking Christ. Oh, th- thank God. Yeah, uh Final Fantasy 13 was really cool for about 20 hours and then I was done. I was like, "Eh, it's not really doing it for me. I'm I'm good." Metal Gear Solid 4, uh, it was a very hype experience. Very, very hype all the way to the end. Yeah, like and, the ending is the most hype and then, possible. And then, and then you think back on it for like over the next week. Uh-huh. And you just go, why did he do that? <laughs> was was most of that game really stupid? <laughs> yeah, that is. Right? And not in a way that's just for the sake of being fun. A lot of that game is just stupid. Right. <laughs> and you just go, what is with that? And then it's like, uh, well, his co-writer for the entire rest of the Metal Gear series didn't work on this one. I'm like, ah, uh, yeah, okay, I could see how that that shifts a little and in his strive to connect uh, an insane amount of dots for seemingly no reason, uh, mm-hmm. we end up here. But yeah, that's that's it for me. Um, let's go to KZ next. KZ, what's most hyped game ever? Uh, okay, um, this one's easy. Kingdom Hearts 3. <laughs> I was going to say, which you. Kingdom Hearts game? Uh, <laughs> uh, 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 the one I've been waiting for since 2006. Uh, that one, where uh, we got so close that I'm like, I'd like to dream about something else every night. Uh, and then that came out, and I'm like, great! You, you hit my expectations, that's great. Good for you! Speaking of, <laughs> ones that, uh, that, that, that I was like, I'm really hype about this. Fallout 4. <laughs> oh. I, I, I liked Fallout 3 enough to where I'm like, I'll take one of those. And they're like, we're going to make one that's worse than that one by a lot. <laughs> and I'm like, whoa. Uh, yeah, that, 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 that's also how I felt about it. Like, I, I liked Fallout 3. I, I don't care that it uh, wasn't as well written. And then Fallout 4 is like, yeah, but yeah, but what if the parts you did like about Fallout 3 were gone? Yeah, that was that was really rough when I came into that. And I'm like, you've ripped out everything I liked about it. And they're like, we've turned your luck stat into press a button to do a crit. And I'm like, do you understand what luck is? As, as a concept here. <laughs> uh, yeah, that, that one I just came out going... At the time, I was like, I'm, I'm vibing a little bit with it, and when I finished it, I'm like, I went from wanting to do everything in the game to never wanting to touch it again, and I still haven't. <laughs> Which, um, yeah, that was that that was really rough. You can't you can't win them all in terms of like I'm highly anticipating a thing. I think it was after that that I was able to like rein in my expectations on stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, to the degree, and this re- this really helps, especially uh, when, you know, following other Square games that came out well after 2016, where I'm like, if something is not in a trailer in any game that will ever come out, there's nothing else there. And I go in with that expectation for every release now, where I'm like, if they didn't show it in a trailer, it probably doesn't exist. So whenever it, if they have something they held back, I'm like, that's exciting. That that's cool. You you you've gone up on the bar here. Yeah, because I feel like so so many games across so many companies uh, give away so much stuff. Yeah. So so I end up building something else in my head based on that, uh, and I've I've tended to avoid that thing by having a certain level of expectation. So I haven't gotten burned too much recently at all. Um. 
Okay. Yeah, yeah, I can't think of anything else uh, that, that's large. Okay. Uh, same question, Bob. Uh, I do this cycle every time a Devil May Cry game came, comes out. So even ever since one, because I didn't have that much hype it's this for one, because, you know, it's a new game. I have no idea. I, mean, I, I played just, a demo. It just snuck in on the Resident Evil Code Veronica X I rented from Blockbuster. Right. Uh, but so Devil May Cry 2 immediately. Super hyped for it. Pre-order it. Get a day of launch. <laughs> I might be one of the first games I like use my own money to buy and everything. Oh. Um, <laughs> and all you got was a good stinger. Uh huh. Yeah, that that game was really terrible, and everyone knows it. <laughs> yes. Uh, so again, for Double May Cry Three, goes well, great, amazing game. Um, Double May Cry Four. Oh, why is this half of what I expected from you? <laughs> uh, yeah, that was that was upsetting. And then Five, of course, is great. Yeah. Um, well, about your expectations for DMC? <laughs> that out of the gate, let me know. <laughs> I shouldn't have expectations. <laughs> yes. Yeah, when every trailer looks like ass and runs like ass, and you know. And you have social media managers being like, the feel of 60 frames per second. I'm like, uh-huh. That is... <laughs> few things will ever be more ridiculous than that. Yeah. Yeah, it was, it was dire. Then there's also uh, FF7 Remake. I got pretty excited for that. That did not go well. <laughs> uh-huh. I'm trying to think. I, I, of course, I had that same thing with Metal Gear Solid 4. Yeah, because that was something in our whole friends group at the time. Like, oh man, Metal Gear Solid. And after after two and three, well, like the jump from two to three was so great. Like three is amazing. Yeah, you don't expect four to just be, oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's not only uh, disappointing in a in a litany of ways story wise, but mechanically, it's such a bizarre creature compared to every other entry. Right, where it's just divided into chapters that play almost completely differently. <laughs> I mean, some of them literally, yeah, like entirely differently. Uh, also, the insane amount of okay, we're now on the plane with Sunny. Yeah, for thirty minutes. And all the trailers <laughs> make you think it's going to do something cool, and it just doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, they, they, they he clearly cut those trailers to imply storylines in it that don't exist at all. <laughs> yes, <laughs> like maliciously. <laughs> it's kind of hilarious in retrospect, right? Playing playing through that chapter, I I can't remember the chapter. I think it was four. I'm not going to say what it is because you know not everyone's played Mario or something four, right? But, there's that thing that happens at the very beginning of the chapter, which was how one of the trailer ends. Uh-huh. And it really makes you go, what? What the hell's happening? Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> and then I let myself do this again with five. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, but the trailers, they show all this insane stuff. What's, it, what's all that light mean? That, that trailer's Nothing. 15 minutes long. Nothing. I don't know. I, I'm trying to remember why I wasn't as hyped for five. And I think it was because four broke me. Yeah, that's fair. That's totally fair. Plus, because I still got it at launch. Right. And then I only played like eight or nine hours enough to get the structure of it and shit and go, nah, nah that's good. I don't, I don't need like four and five could not be more different games. No, I, I, I yeah, had of course, the, not at all. I had the, uh, the break between with playing Peace Walker all the way through and enjoying some of what they did there. Yeah. Um, so it may be somewhat confident they could pull it off in five, and it's like, no, oh well. Yeah, I guess another element of it was this was the third time we told the story that never needed to be told. Yeah, the story of after three before one. Right, we third. Yeah, yeah, because portable ops exists. Oh right, portable ops exists. I always forget it exists because it's not real. Not anymore. It isn't. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so, so after say, after giving a hard pass on that origin story, I didn't need the interquel I never needed twice before, and then this game was, yeah, yeah, I, my, my expectations were low, still disappointed. Right. But I think that's everything that I got super major hype for. Um, there's probably some I've forgotten, but, uh, I can't think of them right now. You know, uh, and then was disappointed because obviously stuff like Bloodstained happened and Castlevania is when they were, you know, coming out frequently. 
Oh, yeah. There was maximum hype going into every Castlevania release for years there for me. Yeah. And then we, when Lords of Shadow was announced, we immediately knew this isn't what we want. <laughs> I'm like, this won't go well. And then it went even worse than I thought. <laughs> right? <laughs> At least Kojima's involved, right? Actually, that was a lie. <laughs> oh. I, I just remember how pathetic the cycle for two was. Mm -hmm. Even as someone who just was on the outside of like, the marketing on this seems really bad. And then years later when they're like, yeah, Konami just just blackballed Kon uh, IGN because their reviewers just gave low scores to one of them. Yeah. <laughs> like the 3DS one. They're like, no, <sighs> fuck you. <laughs> Which is nuts because it's like that that ran terribly on the 3DS. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Yeah. Every every Castlevania game I had like maximum hype for until we started to hit the like judgment adventure rebirth lords of shadow era right yeah and harmony of despair but you know <laughs> the dark times yeah the dark times um but none of those really disappointed before that so all the ones i had hype for went well um aggro do you have any uh i i have a tale of two seventh gen games Ooh, <laughs> oh. is one of them layer <laughs> uh <laughs> No. <laughs> <laughs> um, in September of 2011, uh, Resistance 3 came out. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. And I was, I bought that game with trepidation. I'm like, okay, okay here, <laughs> here we go. Don't hit me again. Puts it in the slot. And like a half an hour later, I'm like, oh, my God, is this game good? And then two hours later, oh, my God, this game is amazing. And I was I was fucking hype as shit. Fuck two. Like the, the <laughs> I, was, I was back on top. Everything's great. The world is as it should be. Everything is coming up. Sony exclusives. Nothing can stop me now. November of 2011. Maybe my most anticipated hype game coming off of one of my favorite experiences ever. A game I loved so much, I actually got deep into the multiplayer. In November of 2011, Uncharted 3 came out. Sorry, <laughs> Sorry Kurt, if you're listening. <laughs> yeah, it's a fantastic game, right? <laughs> I am currently holding the sick Parvis Magna ring that came with the special edition <laughs> with the figure and the steel book. Hell yeah. Hey, at least you got something good with it. <laughs> oh, Uncharted 3. Why were you so mid? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It, it's really a trip playing through it, though. Oh, God, that reminds me of my experience was Ninja Gaiden 3. <laughs> like, oh, yeah, 2 was... Pretty great. Surely they'll just improve on that. No, we removed most things. <laughs> Here's a cool statue you got with the collector edition, though. <laughs> I just kept playing, going, "Why? Why isn't this better? There's nothing. There's nothing wrong with it. Why isn't this better? <laughs> <laughs> Live, damn it! I have all these <laughs> organs. <laughs> <laughs> My big takeaway was. And Uncharted 3 has that crawl space where all the spider-like things come out of it, and that broke my brain for every crawl space afterward. <laughs> where I'm like, are we in a cave? This could go bad. I, I was like, oh, this part's really cool, and I started eating popcorn like Michael Jackson in the Thriller music video. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, uh, I didn't successfully play through Uncharted 3 the first time I played it, because about halfway through, I was like, I don't, it's just not working. Like it's it's really not working for me. Yeah, and then I put it down just, for it's off. I put it down for what ten years? <laughs> nine <laughs> years? It's Something a short like little that. nine year break. Just a little nine year break from the game, and then I played the PS4 version, and it's still yeah yeah. I don't know. I don't know. It's a real shame. Mm -hmm. uh, did you did you have any other tales you wanted to tell before we move on to feel? I mean, I don't, I don't know how hard you want to date this recording. Uh huh. Uh, but I'm currently staring at the Horizon Forbidden West <laughs> countdown clock. Uh -huh. uh, four hours, thirty-eight minutes, forty-eight seconds. <laughs> Surely it can't screw you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready to believe again. Yeah. No, this will go fine. I'm yeah. convinced this will this will be a really great game if you like the first one. 
Oh yeah, there's no way. There's no way. There's no way. My heart is open. I'm ready to be wounded. <laughs> uh, you Resistance know, two again. <laughs> Just a big uh, door. <laughs> you know what? I, I have an interesting uh, permutation of this question. I'm going to go into after feel uh, answers the actually written question. I've never been excited for anything in my life. <laughs> I was so incredibly excited. Unbelievably excited. For Mass Effect 3. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Ooh. So the worst I, I, yet. I feel like I don't have to say, I don't feel like I don't have to go any further. No. Uh, yeah, yeah. I was so, I was so unbelievably excited. So excited for Dragon Age 2. Oh, no. <laughs> this is not fair. We brought in guns. You brought in an orbital space laser as your answers every uh, time. Let, let's see. I was so excited. I was so unbelievably excited for Bioshock Infinite. <laughs> uh, and the last one, which is the only, which I, which still won't need explanation, is I was so unbelievably excited for Star Ocean 4. <sighs> No. <sighs> Seventh Chin really was the worst it has ever been and ever will be. I was lucky. Most of my franchises just fucking died. Fucking died. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They didn't they didn't get the luxury of a really bad game. Yeah, Castlevania unfortunately got that tumor. <laughs> or it's just like, hello, like, I'm Castlevania. And I'm like, no, you're not. What are you? Oh, like that was the moment where I'm like, no, no, I now uh, have realistic expectations, which is I just assume everything is going to be a seven. <laughs> at, at the, at, that like that's the height of my excitement, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, seventh gen will do that to you. Uh, uh you know, I'm. I, oh God, what's? Oh God, it was just like, yeah. Oh wait, Bayonetta two. No. <laughs> uh. There's also that little black box in my brain that isn't allowed to interact with any other parts of my brain where I put how how excited I was for cyberpunk. Oh. And it's it's just locked away in there. <laughs> well, and maybe in 10 years I'll open it up again. That's good. Yeah, just keep it sealed away. Yeah. I was excited for it. I voted for it on most anticipated game on a podcast. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, then I played two hours and went, they lied to me, and I will submit the refund that everyone else is doing right now. <laughs> Slight permutation of this to suit my own taste. You know what's really hype? What's that? Mm. Console launches. Ooh. Mm. Very, very hype oh, for no. that. So good. <laughs> um, you know, some of them go really, really great, right? Some of them you feel like this is this is a watershed moment. This is massively better. Holy crap, games are amazing. You know, I wasn't there for PS1 launch, but thanks to my brother, I was there for like the PS2 launch, pretty close to the GameCube, or I was there at GameCube launch, kind of, and then pretty close on Xbox. All of those felt like amazing moments. Uh, the PSP felt like an amazing moment. We went from the Game Boy Advance to that. That's that's nuts. Like the DS was only out for a few months before the PSP came out. It's like this is unreal. This game's like 3D and has CD quality audio and is stunning. Yeah, and you made sure not to pick up Untold Legends. I wouldn't say I made sure not to. <laughs> you made sure <laughs> at a certain Other point it became it, it became an operative. Yes, it became an operative to lie about scores and then have other people buy. Untold I didn't. Legends. I didn't lie about it. That implies that I knew. <laughs> I misremembered that number heinously. <laughs> IGN gave it a nine. IGN gave it a nine. I swear, J the handsome Joe. It's, uh, Untold Legends is a nine out of ten. IGN said so. So if you're mad about that game, don't look up the review score, but be mad at them. Yes. <laughs> I was like, why would IGN give this a nine? This looks like a piece of shit. <laughs> Looks it up. They didn't. Um, but the PSP was really amazing. And even like a few months in, it's still amazing. It still has this great glow about it. Like you hack it with a JPEG and then play fucking Zelda 2 on an NES emulator you loaded onto it. And you've just never seen a portable be so competent at emulation and all of these other amazing functionalities of this futuristic portable that's so incredible. Things are feeling great. The PS2 launch was hype. The PSP launch is hype. Then the PS3 comes out. 
Bob and I waited, what was it, 27 hours in a line? Yeah, thereabout. <laughs> 25, 27 hours in a line. Yeah, it was 27. To get a PS3. We get it. We drive back all the way like 50 miles or something, 45 miles to get from the Defuniac Springs Walmart in the middle of nowhere, sitting with a bunch of dirt bags and the guy right behind us who can't get one for his kid for Christmas because they had exactly enough to get the dirt bags who were buying it for some other guy and us a PS3. And then that guy's just seething because he knows the first four people in line are just buying it to sell it. We get it back. We boot it up. One of the first experiences we have is we boot Resistance. We go, hey, they, they they pull up the menu during E3 by hitting the PlayStation button. Let's do that. You hit it, it does nothing. <laughs> it does literally nothing. It, it didn't even give us the screen that said turn off system then? You had to press and hold for that. Oh, yeah, yeah. So we're just like, what? And it does nothing. It's just it's just a menu prompt, just like the PS1 back compat is in the PS3, even to this day, where there's just a menu with some text options. And it just say it's just the most ridiculous stuff of like quick game, shut down system, controller stuff. And I'm like, what? What? <sighs> yeah. That launch oh, was yeah. the roughest I think it I've was ever a bill of goods. It was insane. That was that was also when you would launch the game and it would play a scary noise, right? That I still yes. don't know about. <laughs> yeah, the, for the first year and a half where it just goes, and then the game starts. And it pops up with the PS3 logo to scar this into you. Just some PlayStation 3 Spider-Man text. Yes. Yeah, mm-hmm. just just gives a, oh. The and, goat. And that's when the PlayStation store was a webpage. <laughs> yeah. I'm really glad. Blast Factor. <laughs> yeah, I'm really glad that that, that, that was real. Because you could absolutely have a nightmare where that would be the case, right? Yeah. Like, you could see your brain inventing that existed, but it's just insane. Yeah, no, Sony, Sony, of all people, launched a digital storefront that was a webpage you operated with the mouse cursor being operated by the left stick. They thought this was good enough. So about I mean, what? <laughs> like there, there's a lot you can say about the PS3 launch if you describe the things that happened during it, but I find it's better to focus on everything that happened right before you were allowed to buy it. Because I don't think anything will ever equal the insane, nearly religious fervor. <laughs> All the years of E3s and all the blatant <laughs> lies had whipped us into. Yeah. yeah. Yes. This thing was a miracle incarnate before you turned it on. Yes. No, that's true. It definitely was. And like by modern standards, you would have been horribly disappointed in the PS3. But you didn't understand back then the lies were so constant and everything was so bullshit that the moment you boot it, there was no chance it wasn't getting like a two out of ten from you. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah i know there was still a little bit of like this is cool but it was a lot it was with a big dose of oh no <laughs> yeah but yeah so far like if looking back on the history of you know remotely worth talking about hardware launches i think the 3ds launch and the ps3 launch were like the two most disappointing you know I didn't own an Xbox One at launch. Maybe if I was insane enough to spend five hundred dollars, play Dead Rising Three. They, I mean, they put the like instead of being just tons of lies, like the PlayStation Three was, to promising great things. They were instead just outright w- up front with like, we're trying to screw you. We're definitely trying to screw you. Don't buy this. I mean, yeah. They, he, here's the connect. Everyone hated it. Yeah, I mean, it led with TV, TV, sports, and then immediately went mandatory online. Yeah, <laughs> mandatory connect. It was it was dire. It was like, why would anyone buy that? Wow, you're really good at digging this hole. I'm not going to buy that hole. Like there are so many traps with that that when they announced the Killer Instinct revival, I'm like, this is gonna be terrible. And it turned out to be good because I'm like, well, everything surrounding surrounding this platform seems like it's a trap and evil. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. I, I wish, I wish the 3DS launch was better. <laughs> that launch was dire. Yeah. I, I I don't even have to explain. They cut the price by eighty dollars within four months. 
they know. <laughs> there were no Nintendo yeah. games at launch, really. It was it 80 or 70? It was, I think it was 80. I could be wrong. But yeah, but what were they thinking? Uh, th- Bob, there was one Nintendo game at launch. Do you know what it is? I can't even remember. We now go to Casey. Do you remember what it is? No. We now go to Field. Do you remember what it is? No. Dr. Agro? <laughs> I never owned a 3DS. <laughs> huh? Steel Diver. No! <laughs> What? Yeah, Everyone, that makes sense. Everyone's like, wait. <laughs> no, that was made by the, them. That's the gun in Smash Bros. There's like a sub gun. Yeah, it's Steel Diver. Yeah. Uh, that's one of the... Steel I remember it was one of the Diver. <laughs> lowest priced games at GameStop. <laughs> yeah. For a long while. Yeah, no, it was a game where they clearly partnered it up with a studio in Japan. Like a really small one, like a Q game size studio. And then said, hey... We need a 3DS launch game. <laughs> and they got one. So mission accomplished. Oh my god, just looking at this game. But yeah, this is this is technically a Nintendo second party game. Oh my god. This that's is, insane. This is their game. Mm-hmm. <laughs> now I'm remembering the weird deals we would do. Um like GameStop would be like, oh, if you trade in this many games, you get a bonus. Like you'll get 10% more if you trade in five games or something like that. Mm-hmm. So then I'd be like, buy this dollar game, buy Steel Diver and trade it in the same transaction, <laughs> then you're trading in five <laughs> games to get 10% more for everything else. <laughs> yeah, yes, I, I took advantage of that many times, which is why I imagine they eventually stopped doing that. Yeah, it's probably why they don't do that anymore. Yep. <laughs> there was there was one year where it was real psychotic, where it was like, I, I forget what year it was. It was like 2014 or 2015, maybe? And it was like, if you, if you, if you trade in five games, you get 30 extra dollars. <laughs> Yeah, that that, that oh, yeah. sounds right. I remember that. And then and it was like, oh, look at all these horrible seventh gen games that are worth a dollar. Because <laughs> even even like even like a couple years after they came out, they're like, we'll give you uh, fifty cents for Uncharted two. And I'm like, it's not even that old. What happened? Uh, here's the gun and smash that Jay Z was talking about. Yeah. That's made out of steel diver. <laughs> Yeah, it has like a a slow torpedo shot on it. Yep. It's, yeah, it's pretty funny. Thank you, because I've I've only I could never figure out what it looked like, and I never zoomed in on it. Mm-hmm. I, I'm very curious to play Steel Diver one day. Yeah, same. Now that it's not forty fucking dollars. Yeah. <laughs> you, you know, I was thinking about hi, uh, times I was hyped for a console launch. It's only happened a couple of times because all the other times uh, I was young or poor. So it became this thing of, I'm not going to get it. That's not going to happen for me. So I can't really speak toward it. I remember the Switch launch where I'm like, I'm incredibly excited for this. Uh, the games itself were all right. And I and I enjoyed them. Uh, but trying to get one to my house through Amazon was a horrible experience and made me want to die. Yeah. How long did that take? It took It took like almost an extra week where they just kept lying to me every time I called or used their customer support. And they're like, <sighs> it's it's on the road. It's like a mile from you. And they're like, no, it's, it's, at, a, it's at a building like uh, in, in, in Mesquite, two cities away at a, at a, at a fulfillment center. <sighs> and, and that was I was just like, I don't know if I can do this with you guys anymore. And uh I, I still do because it's Amazon. It's like, what can you do? The PS5 launch I was very hyped for. Uh because it seemed like a magic machine that would solve all of life's problems. And then uh, it was. And then and then, it, and then it arrived after I was running a stream for something else for like eight or nine hours. And uh we unpacked it and then we played uh we played Astro's Playroom. Uh I hadn't eaten the entire time, so I'm like starving, but my eyes are transfixed upon this game. <laughs> And then you're streaming, and then I beat your high score, and it told me, and then I could press one button to like jump into that into that speed run game, mm-hmm. and that felt like magic that that could never be achieved or has been done before. And I'm like, this is it. We've we've reached the future. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, the PS5 is honestly one of the best vibes launches since um, I guess the Wii. Yeah, I was gonna. Like, the I Wii was gonna talk about the, vibes, the Wii yeah. launch and how how strange that was because we do that insane. 27 hour wait for the PS3. For the PS3. Then yeah. the next week. Or maybe even <laughs> no. just a few days later. No, yeah, it was it was in the next week at least. Yeah, it was very close. Mm-hmm. I just walk into GameStop because I have it pre ordered and I, I just pick it up and there's like no line. It feels really nice to just be able to go get it. Yeah. <laughs> and then we boot it up and it's like, this is surprisingly competent. 
Oh yeah, no, it Red Steel is a complete lie though. <laughs> yeah, Red Steel is a complete lie, but <laughs> I remember you talking about the magazine ads at the time. The the complete lie. Fuck that thing. Oh man. Yeah, yeah, we 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 swore it was a lot of fun. Red Steel is like, wow, bull shots are real. <laughs> it, yes. Oh yes. God. We, that thing we, was completely faked. It was stunning how much they lied. Like it was, it was Killzone Two CG trailer level of you lied to us. Yeah, you would have struggled it, to get those images working on a PS3 or 360. Yeah, and they're like, yeah, you, you, the Wii does this. Am I the only person who, to this day, still gets Red Steel and Wet confused? Yes, <laughs> probably. <laughs> I don't know why. It's just they 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 have like this. That's like you have a sword and a gun. It'd be funny and, if there was a Wet too, and they're both bad. Uh, there, but yeah, there, they announced they announced Wet Two KZ. They oh, just never made it. Yeah, oh. they never made it. Oh, okay, it, it couldn't live on like Red Steel Two. No. Uh, but yeah, no, it, it was weird because in a way, like we had experienced the cross media bar from the PSP. Uh huh. So the PS3 wasn't like this revolutionary. Oh, it's just like so much fancier. But it looked nice as a, as an OS experience. But the Wii. Something about it was so elegant and cool in the way you interfaced with the menu. Yeah, the channels. That it felt like a next-gen thing. Like, it felt like a really different novel experience that was kind of cool and smooth. Uh, Gotta go do the voting channel. And the virtual console stuff, which was there at launch. Yeah, we played uh, Pinball and Altered Beast. Yeah. It honestly felt, experience-wise, like, holistically better. It's it had great vibes. It it also had the slight edge of future feel. <laughs> and then the Wii U happened, and the Wii U doesn't really have that. Even when it came out at the tail end of seventh gen, the Wii U just felt like you're off. What if the Wii was sterile? What if the Wii took hours to update? Because that's one of the first experiences anyone has yep. opening that thing. Mm. Uh, yeah, in the giant gamepad was clunky and bizarre sounded like a really old cell phone even at the time yeah the the <laughs> motor and the rumble just sounded like a nokia phone from 2004 going off yeah how, how do we get you excited for the wii u well they're gonna port mass effect 3 to it yeah and batman yeah batman, yep, batman. armored edition yep <laughs> yeah so so in the in the grand scheme of vibes and cool feeling launches uh, you know, I kind of, I kind of put the Wii way up there. The PS3 really far down with the 3DS, and uh, yeah, yeah. PS5 was really good. The only thing that could have made that better is for us to exist in a parallel dimension where next gen exclusives still financially feasible. <sighs> Unfortunately, that's not where we live. So I enjoyed my time with every game on the PS4 now running at 60, and also like Astro's Playroom and the few next gen exclusives we got. Like Demon Souls, which was nuts. But yeah, we should move on. We got a message from Textbook Gavin. Hey, Giga Boys, it's Gav. I just wanted to say thank you for doing what y'all do. Your content helped me get through COVID recently, and it always cheers me up when I'm down. My question is what's the stupidest thing you ever did as a child? When I was five years old, my dad rented a Spider-Man game from Blockbuster, and after he returned it, I missed it so much that I snuck out of the apartment, walked down three sets of stairs, got two lanes across a four-lane street before someone stopped me and walked me back. I came very close to dying. Thank you for the uh, email, Gavin. This list is so long. <laughs> I can't properly. I mean, you, you, you've mentioned you jumping out of a Jeep one. <laughs> No, I, I jumped out of a Jeep. Bob was driving once on a normal ass road. I went car door mud surfing, um, which is where you knock the side view mirror off of a car door, hook it up to the back of a Jeep and then go through mud. Um, you're standing on the car door in case that wasn't clear. <laughs> no, you're, not, you're just wrecking the, the car doors you drive. <laughs> yeah, owned. Owned. Yep. Uh, went off-roading slash mudding in a fucking hurricane. Oh, God, the list is so fucking long. Uh Christ. Yeah, it's 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 just it's ceaseless. So we're going to go to feel feel. Tell them something stupid you did. <laughs> uh, one time I put a cigarette lighter on my tongue. 
Oh. I was just like, what'll happen if I put this on my tongue? <gasps> Here's the thing. I think I did something like that, but I don't think it was my tongue. God, I hope it wasn't my tongue. I, I, I don't remember where I put it, though. Because I, I, cause I, I guess I didn't understand it was hot or how hot. Yeah, I didn't yeah, understand it, exactly what it was. It looks cool. Because it's just like a weird <laughs> coil of metal, yeah. Yeah, it's all like red and hot. <laughs> you're like, look at this cool red you're hot like, thing. You're like, how'd that go? I should apply that to my face. <laughs> Is there anything else? I've shared like the riding a chair down, a, down the stairs thing before, so... I won't go into that too much, but I did do that and did break my arm. What kind of chair are we talking about? Oh, my God. It is... It was... Have you ever seen one of those rocking chairs that don't have legs? They're, like, for kids' rooms? Yes. Uh-huh. It's, like, it's like black pleather. Yeah. And you can oh, put it... And, yeah. and, if you, and if you put it on its back, it looks sort of like yes. an old-timey sled. Uh-huh. Oh, no. No, I get it. The moment you said that, I'm like, oh, I get the physics and everything now. <laughs> And it was me and another person. It was me and with and, and uh, my cousin. It, the, I, I say cousin, but we're not actually related. It's fucking complicated. Okay. Yeah, I think everyone the has first a time, kid to hang out with that there was allegedly their cousin or something. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so the first time it worked fine. I was like, wow, that was that was great. Let's do it again. <laughs> what a rush. <laughs> and then I flew off the uh, flew off and landed on my arm and broke my arm was there anything else i'm trying to think like the, there was the tongue thing deliberate ones usually not so much like it's usually i do something stupid or i don't do i just do something accidentally right like that time i stabbed myself in the eye with a uh, fireworks punk oh huh which was gross because like the fungus grows over your entire eye oh um I think that's it. I don't think I have any like egregiously stupid things I've ever done. Uh, one, t I guess one time I threw threw cooking oil all over the floor and tried to skate around, and that was that, that did not uh, endear me to anyone. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't have many fans. <laughs> <laughs> lost, lost followers over that one. <laughs> <laughs> Getting beat up yeah. in the quotes. <laughs> okay. Uh, aggro. The dumbest thing I did when I was a child was desperately desire to grow up. <laughs> Man, I thought the one I was going to come in next was dark. Jesus. <laughs> But also, there was that time my brother and I were playing mountain climber on the stairs with our dad's set of Air Force suspenders, and that son of a bitch let go and cracked the oh. front of my tooth. Oh, oh. oh. Jesus. Oh, no, no. <sighs> you know, it's probably stupid that I did this, but I don't know. I'd, I'd do it again. Uh, so you know how escalators... Specifically, the one at the military hospital around here would have, um, you know, you have, of course, the, the metal part that is the standing platform and then the side uh, rails that are for the handles that are like rubber, right? Okay, yeah, same standard. As a child, I would walk up and it, one of the first things in this hospital is they have an escalator that goes up to the second floor, okay? I would go up on the outside of it, grab the fucking handle and just ride it up into the air. And my mom's like, no, stop. Why do you do this? I'm like, it's, it's great. It seems like a weird thing for an, a hospital to have an escalator. Maybe, maybe that's just me. That just seems no, strange. That's, that's very common. Okay. See, that's the thing, though. It's like, how many wheelchairs are you taking around? when you prefer an elevator? Yeah. Yeah, I'm used to elevators. Well, well, es well, the escalators, I guess, are for people who don't need a wheelchair, but stairs are still hard. Yeah, and I don't know. Elevators are for wheelchairs, because because when you go into the hospital here, the first thing you see is an escalator. Huh. See, here's the thing. I actually don't know how close the elevator was at that hospital. I think it was the at the back side of that wing. So it's like, here's the escalator. It's instantly in front of you. There's the elevator. It's way the fuck back there. Yeah, yeah. I feel like a lot of hospitals have like two level lobbies. Yeah. So an elevator 
doesn't make into, like be for except for wheelchairs doesn't make a huge amount of sense for like those so that so a lot of them will be have escalators but yeah that shit was fun as hell i did that for years my mother was very upset <laughs> aside from that the rest is me doing shit that gets scars and uh okay so wooden bridge in a backyard because their backyard is horribly uneven has anyone else seen anything like this in their lives it is yeah oh yeah, yeah. okay me- it's what we call a cottage core backyard mm-hmm Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> me and the kid who lives there i don't know why he thought this was a good idea but we're jumping on the opposite ends of it because it's not quite level with the ground and it acts like a seesaw. Oh my god. Okay. It, it flings up and knocks me right in the fucking face. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Our problem was we were too good. But yeah. Uh, aside from that, yeah, I jumped out of a vehicle, whatever. Hey, Bob. Hey. Do you have any of these? Yeah, um, I, I might have told the story about me swinging around a TV, PVC pipe insanely hard, is like as hard as I could, like spinning it. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I think you told. Me. Okay, it was a, it was a small PVC pipe. I, I I'm spinning. I'm like, oh, this is cool. It makes a cool noise, and then it shatters in my hands, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> kind of flays them. <laughs> cool, very cool. And then this one wasn't my fault. I wasn't the stupid one. Oh, that's a good I didn't story. know. I didn't know the weather patterns. <laughs> my parents took me there. We went out during a tropical storm. <laughs> To like a, what do you call it? Like a jetty? Yeah. Yeah. It was really shallow water and we got really far out in the water. What? Um, like, is, well, the, you see, the storm wasn't supposed to come until like 2 or 3 p.m. And we got out there early so we could get, get ahead of it. Because <laughs> we just had to go looking for oysters. What? Not oysters. Uh, sa- scallops. Because we were like catching scallops. What? Um, with little nets and was, okay. it, it, it snorkel around it's fun it's your parents and, and we get super far out there like probably half a mile into this jetty super shallow area and then we could see the storm coming <laughs> like literally it's the rain you can see the cutoff point for the rain and we start running back through this horrible marsh jesus christ um that wasn't my fault no i didn't think no, but it, that's it, it ridiculous. Was, it was really dumb, though. <laughs> that's that's absurd. At least I was, you know, with the off-roading during a hurricane thing. That was my fucking dumbass older brother. Right? It wasn't my parents. <laughs> <laughs> um, That's the only ones that are coming to mind right now. Okay. Uh, Casey? You know how the Super Nintendo has, like, a power brick thing you plug into the wall? Yeah. It's, like, the whole thing. Uh-huh. Uh, I was probably, like, five or something, and I'm like... There's like a little bit of a gap in the top, so I started like getting flat things and like going uh, going up and down and going up and down and flipping through it, and and then it caused like a spark explosion that completely blackened that outlet. My parents are like, "What are you doing? You're holding a magnet." It didn't hurt me at all, but it, it, it was funny, and it didn't even damage it damaged nothing. Even that outlet, I think, still worked. Uh, well, damn! But, but they're like they're like you could die that way. And then they also went on to teach me certain things, like uh, if you touch a light bulb uh, while it's lit, you'll die. Oh. <laughs> uh, so that explains why you told me to twist a light bulb earlier, because it went out. Uh-huh. And when I said, wouldn't that electrocute me? And you said no. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah, they just regularly lied to me about things that could potentially uh, kill me that wouldn't. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Casey, I'm starting to think you may have, like, electropath abilities, and your <laughs> parents were trying to shield you from a life dedicated to crime fighting. I'm going to need you to grab a butter knife and just stick it into an outlet real quick. Uh, yeah, Casey, you got to charge don't, up. Don't do that. <laughs> like don't do that. You're not a conduit, KZ. Uh, I, I think the worst part is Dan sees me audibly look to the path of our kitchen. Yeah, no, don't, don't do that, man. <laughs> do, do it for static shock. <laughs> no, oh, man. Oh, man. do not I, I do it that. for Static Shock. Static Shock, we would not want you to do that. Yeah, I, I do that. If fucking Dan, you could be my Richie. I'll suddenly be voiced by Phil Lamar. Okay, next time, next time you need to replace the batteries, KZ, in your Xbox controller, just lick it. Just lick it. It'll be fine. <laughs> I've licked the bottoms of batteries before. It's weird. Hell yeah. Yeah, nine volts are designed for that. Hey, 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 you hey sometimes you need to you need to feel something. It's like when I would smell Expo markers. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Oh yeah. 
I, I used to have those scent markers when I was a kid. Um, I got I got one story that isn't about me that I have to tell because it's fucked. Okay. <laughs> um, one of my earliest memories, I was like two because this took place in fucking Iowa. Uh, me and a bunch of neighbor kids were all playing and you know how at, in, in a front door, there's like the main wooden or metal door and then like the screen door Yeah. and the screen door is, is sometimes has glass in it. And you know how glass today is all like safety glass and you know, you, you, it shatters and the, the film holds everything together. It's not like old plate glass that splinters into swords. Right. This this was not safety glass. I watched a four-year-old kid in the middle of our playing pretend and running around shout, I'm the Terminator, and put his fist through plate glass, shredding oh, 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 his hand. Oh, what no. a... Oh. I'm the Terminator. Oh, no. It was the most metal thing I've ever seen. They took it well, I'm sure. Oh, he was in shock. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> Just looking at his hand, like what? <laughs> the okay. adults did not take that well. Well, I think that's as good of a story as possible to wrap up this big think mailbag. Oh, yeah, man. Jesus. <sighs> we got some good ones in this one, though. Yeah, Jesus. <laughs> God, I have superpowers. No, you. D- no, no. Oh. <laughs> Don't let the man keep you down, KZ. Also, that light bulb will kill you. Ah! <laughs> this month's Gigaboots videos were brought to you by the continued support of our executive producers, such as Esme, E. Lee Broyles, Star Falcon, Spaceman Spiff, Red Blaze 27, Brendan O'Sullivan, Burning Pepsi Man, Adam Admar, Cooper, Tank, and Virmvarm. Thank you very much to our executive producers and also these gamers. If you want to support Gigaboots so we can continue the content crunch, then head on over to patreon.com slash gigaboots today.